Hey everybody, it's Charles, your hobby hero, coming at you with a recap video for a jam-packed release week for me. But before we get started, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button down in the bottom corner. I do appreciate it. I do put out regular content about the hobbies that I love the most with this channel being dedicated to the card games that I play. Now, as I've mentioned a couple times before on the channel, this past week was absolutely packed with events. I'm gonna, gonna go over some of the events that I played in, a shout out to a couple of the stores that have supported the hobby very, very well in my opinion, and just kind of recap what I see going forward in the current set to environment. So to kick the week off, one of the regular Tuesday night league events that I play in is held by a local store called Comic Book World. They do events every Tuesday night, and each night that you show up, you are able to get two packs upon attendance of the event. So to send set one off with a bang, and right after we got the restock from the set one, we decided that everybody in the league wanted to do some drafting of set one, going to give it a royal send-off. We had a total of 17 players who showed. We did a pod of eight and then a pod of nine, which the attendance was a little bit lower than we expected, but with the set two looming right around the corner, it's no surprise that people were just kind of saving what money they may have had for it to purchase as much set two as they could, but still a good crowd right before another set relaunches. Nonetheless, I got to draft. My son actually was in the same pod with me. He is six and he actually had a blast drafting as well. If you're not familiar with drafting, make sure you go check out my drafting video on how to guide on that as well. I was able to play all three rounds. I was able to win all three rounds. I had a ton of fun as this was my very first draft that I got to do with the Disney Lorcana card game. It's a little different from drafting other card games in that there's really not a ton of deck building strategy when it goes into it since it's a rainbow format you just kind of draft whatever the best cards were and that was pretty much my strategy on and if you're not really sure how to identify that like i said the video will kind of tell you how to get into some of those best strategy picks for the deck all right, now fast forward to Thursday night, and another shop that I participate in their leagues regularly on is Hollywood Movies and Games. Now, they actually have two locations here locally, one in Jeffersonville and one in Clarksville, and it's a thank you to all of their league members. They had an invite-only free-to-play draft in which I think they invited about 20 people, and we had about 12 that were able to show up. Now, there was no prize for this particular tournament other than your four packs that you got for entering into the event. They also gave away league promos, and they gave away a league grand championship prize that was drawn at random, and guess who won it? yours truly. I got this sweet Incredibles poster limited to 350 in print hanging up in my Disney den already. Now I didn't get anything super crazy out of the pack and since there was no prizing and it was on a weeknight right before the big release weekend, most people only played about a round before the crowd started to kind of thin out. Right before we left though, they did bring some warm Krispy Kreme donuts. And just like we learned at Gen Con, donuts do make everything better. So it was good time by everybody and a great palate cleanser for set one heading into the events of set two. Now, Friday was the big day as it was release day and my day was jam packed. One of the longest running shops in the area and a close friend of mine, Empire Comics and Games had a hookup for some product at MSRP. All of his league players were taken care of with product at MSRP, which clearly sold out very fast, but kudos to them for taking care of the people who are playing in their store. I was able to get one booster box, one trove, and one of each of these starter decks from them. Shot home to open up that booster box here on the channel for you guys to get that recorded and uploaded for you guys on release day. And then right after that, I headed over to a, another local shop that I play at, Busby's Games over in Jeffersonville. Another great shop owner who has really been trying to support the community and grow a regular tournament scene. Now he was limiting the product that you could buy to basically one of each big item that they had, like a booster box, a trove, or one of the Disney 100 collections. So I was able to get one of the Disney 100 collection from him. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to play in his Saturday event, which was a sealed deck event, which I would have absolutely loved to, but unfortunately, he announced the details after I had already pre-registered my family 
for a different event on Saturday. So I wasn't able to play in that event, but it looked like it went very, very well. And kudos to the people who got to participate in that sealed event. Hopefully I'll get to participate in another one as I haven't gotten to participate in one since the very first one that they held at Gen Con. Now to get into the tournaments for the weekend. So all the tournaments that I played in this weekend were actually hosted by Hollywood Movies and Games at their two separate lo locations on Friday night, Saturday night, and then Sunday around lunchtime at alternating locations is where they held those events. So the format for all the events was the starter deck challenge where you open up your starter deck and you can modify it with the one pack that comes in the starter deck. They did allow rainbow rules. So any color card you were able to integrate into your deck, it wasn't color specific for those particular tournaments. Now they did not have packs for set two as prize support for the event because there wasn't enough for the number of people they had. I think they had 49 people at the Friday night event. I think there were 50, 48 people at the Saturday event. And if memory serves me correct, about 20 on the Sunday event, which they said they did keep purposely small just because it was a lot of uh, events going on for them personally. It's family that runs the business and they did all of it themselves. So kudos to them for the, the amount of work that they put into it. Now they did cater dinner for the Friday and Saturday night events. We had sub sandwiches and pizza for those events. And since they didn't have pack support for the top cuts, they did do three rounds of Swiss. And then they just used tiebreakers to determine who was the winner for each of those events. I was fortunate that I was able to go undefeated for the three events. We ended up getting some cool statues. I got a snow globe uh, for Anna and Elsa. That is really, really sweet. We got this Tinkerbell ornament that is carved out of wood, which is, well, looks like it's carved out of wood, rather. Uh, that's really, really sweet. And they allowed anybody who participated in the tournament to purchase two packs of set two while they were there. And they had some leftover set one packs from the restock, and you were able to purchase two packs of those while you were there. They were right at MSRP, maybe $7 a pack. So very, very fun there. I didn't open anything super great. My wife had the hot hands this weekend, opening up a bunch of the legendaries for the new set and even cracked a Maleficent out of her set one pack. So super fun all the way around. Now I did play the Amethyst Steel deck for the first night. Uh, and then I needed actually more of the Queens <laughs> for my deck that were in the starter deck. So I ended up playing the Queen starter deck, the Sapphire and Amber starter deck for the remaining tournaments so that I could get my four copies of the Queen there. Both decks played really well. I know there's a lot of speculation on which decks better, which one's the other. If you know how to pilot them and you know what cards to prioritize in your mulligans and to take out to add in packs, they're both very competitive decks. So had a lot of fun with that. All in all, it was a great weekend though. I did get to open a good amount of product. I got to play a lot of games and meet a lot of new faces, which is really the most important thing. I was worried that with the distribution problems for set one that we may have a like an attrition of new players wanting to come to the game, but that was absolutely not the case. Tons of new faces and families coming out to play these games. That's really what makes this game particularly special. You know, minus being a game, minus being an IP that I love, it's getting to go out and play different types of players that I've really never played in my TCG career, which is, makes it really, really awesome when I can sit down at a table and play with my daughter and my wife and my son, and we can bring friends over and have those same games as well. That was my experience this weekend. I'd love to hear yours as well. Make sure you guys let me know in the comment section below how your release weekend went as well. Until next time, though, guys, Hobby Hero, 